Good evening. It's um, Tuesday evening, the 19th of March 2019, and I'm in Bristol. Um, I've had a warm response from my uh, people so far that have uh, looked at my other video yesterday or a couple of days ago on talking about uh, the identity um, and the threat to national identities and individual identities and uh, what this what this pressure to for globalization of which the European Union is an aspect of course seeking to bring together a lot of different states in under one banner called the European Union now that really only came into operation after a long series of treaties right from the 1950s through the economic uh, community uh, that we joined in uh, 1975, England joined it, and you know, there was a coal and steel industries and then eventually uh, of Germany and France and eventually all these different treaties started to build up um, because uh, really the Euro European Union was originally a treaty organization tried to trying to design or its its impetus at least on the outer world was to the outer representation of it was to try and find peace and stability um, and and you know in other words to try and harmonize a lot of the laws and a lot of the um, uh, the uh, sense of people and so to break down boundaries to uh, dissolve the differences between people to a certain extent and almost usher in a new kind of utopic secular uh, humanistic ideal uh, little did they well they they forgot really that the uh, cause of certain religions uh, um, no matter how um, uh, uh, obsolete they may appear to have become there is a religious instinct as Jung said in us and that serves to bring as man's ego in relation to a higher purpose the the individual itself is not just about uh, conforming to normalization of the state which is what I, I, I think the European Union threatens in a way even though its aims are laudable in certain respects because it, I mean, it was found that wars exist between nations and and empire building and um, the, the, the sense of inferiority of different nations of the quest quest for power and uh, certainly religious uh, uh, motivations have uh, led to wars just as much but the, um, the, 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 the to, to leave out this um, uh, inward spiritual search uh, be it through religions or spirituality or whatever it is and to try and secularize society to try and bring everybody under one roof into a kind of mixing uh, a mixing bowl uh, as if you can you you can produce a new kind of cake from it without any taste whatsoever as i found when i used to make uh, vegetable soup um if I if I had equal proportions of the soup, uh, equal proportions of different vegetables, it didn't taste of anything. So what I do now is, of course, I make a vegetable soup, but I have one particular vegetable that is prominent. And so this seems to have a, a kind of quality to it and the rest kind of support the main thing. And th this is the essence, if you like, of the um, of the individual self that everybody is a, a, a container of the same basic human processes but we individualize that we individuate we we try and find a particular style and bring all of our own in unique and individual experiences uh, to bear upon life and then contribute to the whole uh, from that to destroy individual identities and um, uh, which one will do or eventually one will do if you mix in um, into that this 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 ideal of a perfect union between um, between states if if that's done you just get a homogenized flatland single organization which governs everyone and the, the arguments against the EU by Michael Foote in the 1975 and, um, and Tony Benn, particularly two of my favorites, uh, I wouldn't say that I was a staunch socialist, of course, um, but this, this sense that uh, democracy would be given away, local democracy, you couldn't vote out anybody, and all of that, it creates problems. 
And as I said previously in the other video, it's quite possible that at some future time when people are settled in themselves, when they have a sense that uh, religion and secular society can work together, and that, that, that uh, in, in, I, I was watching Father B. Griffiths on line uh, the other day been introduced to that by uh, Rupert Sheldrake very interesting um, um, very interesting scientist and speaker and all-round good egg I think and he, he spent some time with uh, Father B. Griffiths who was a, a, a Catholic um, monk I believe a friend no not a Franciscan a um, a, a, I can't remember whether he used to be a, a monk, probably not the Franciscan order, the other one, the uh, Benedict, Benedictine monk. And, and he went to um, India to try and create this gentle fusion between the, the ideas and theology of Christianity with the Hindu traditions, with the Advaita tradition, the unity consciousness that the ultimately the monk in any tradition is, is, is to towards is, is going towards um, and what what uh, B Griffiths was talking about right back in the 70s and the 80s was that we are moving eventually towards a a, a theological fusion he called it that uh, in the end there is a realization that the particular ladder that we climb up whatever it is eventually when you get to a certain point it doesn't matter what kind of habits you're wearing or what kind of gowns or what kind of titles you've given yourself occultism for example is full of those titles of ipsissimus and the uh, magister templi and uh, all that kind of uh, uh, stuff that tends to exalt the ego rather than to bring it down um uh, or, or you know the great matriarchs or the great patriarchs or this this and that the other um when you hit the um the apex point the the the, um, uh, the alpha and omega you start here and the omega point which is a um a, a kind of overall sense that you've reached a spiritual apex in your life which could mean uh, as i say a non-dual feeling but what it you climbed up the ladder and whichever one it is uh, it's thrown away eventually because the words don't mean anything the words and the theologies don't really because spirituality is beyond mind so what i'm trying to say here is that although there is a it is a general tendency in humankind to eventually move towards this unity uh, with other people a, a joining together of humanity in a common purpose called the human condition which is what Jung's vision was with his Aquarian ascendant this very Aquarian uh, element here this doesn't mean to say that everybody should be the same or wear the same clothes or, 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 or be under one banner, because this will have the effect of a, a, a strange kind of tyranny, almost like the political correctness is doing. But uh, I mean, I heard in France, I heard in the read in the Telegraph the other day that France is going to do away with the with the words mother and father. It, they're going to delineate um, the differences between the sexes by calling them parent one and parent two and um and so on so so what you get is this eventual thinning out this eventual same language that we must all use and if we don't we're uh, called, called racist or whatever we're ever called and that's a simple excuse for a kind of tyranny of political correctness so this this unity should not the, the the disort is is a transcendent unity not not a not not a unity of look or um language or, or whatever it's the diversity of language and it's interesting that diversity even though that's the name of the game i think culturally at the moment it's in the ascendant it's this uh, diversity uh, it's it's strange how uh, people can't uh, be allowed to have their views in this diversity they're not allowed to be rude. They're not allowed to use polemic anymore. I think polemic used to be one of the uh, great uh, 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 oratory uh, processes, like, uh, and you, you could give a kind of um, oratory of polemic, and you could whip yourself up into a bit of a in, um, 
a, a bit of a mood or evoke certain emotions and images in people. It doesn't mean to say that you were bigoted. Bigotry is a different kind of thing. Fundamentalism is a different kind of thing. But you, 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 you can't um, destroy tyranny or conflict or opposition by flat landing out everybody's uniqueness which has been the trend, of course, since Neptune moved into Aquarius some time ago, about um, maybe 15 years ago or so, 20 years ago. And then we had the, the long run of Uranus through Capricorn and then Aquarius, then Pisces. Neptune is still in Pisces at the moment, suggesting that this pull towards a, 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 a fusion, I, I think this is what is behind the problems of gender identity at the moment. Um, and the victim mentalities, uh, the, 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 the people don't know where they are. They don't know, the, you know, these images in society of, of, of let's say, that the basic division between male and female, that's not allowed to be said anymore. I mean, some of the stories coming out about a headmistress calling her girls girls and uh, then being held up to this was some kind of a problem to call them girls anymore. I mean, uh, I, I think the whole thing is going a bit crazy. And the, the people that have introduced it, uh, while maybe well intentioned to try and help people see how their their own personality and their own biases inform what they do, uh, if you're not allowed to have any biases, if you're not allowed to be of a, a, a particular persuasion, then you're not allowed to do anything. You're not allowed to be left, right, indifferent, to different. Uh, you're not allowed to be unusual, uh, uh, and, and so on. Um, you know, uh, difference isn't real difference. It's all part of the diverse mix. So it's a very interesting contradiction around about now with all this Neptune in Pisces, where uh, there is a pull towards a, a uh, the pull towards redemption in in a unification is not the unification in the physical body or cultural or, or, or in culture. Em, all empires, which of course the U European Union is seeking to become its own empire, uh, in economic terms, of course it's been set up for, for a long time to try and um, have a, uh, a kind of balance with the big major powers around the world, China and uh, Russia and the United States and uh, 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 the BRIC countries and uh, the emerging uh, uh, power of um, uh, Asia and particularly India, all of those things. And so it, it's seen that it wants to kind of compete with those by setting up a larger body. But, you know, in doing so, a lot is lost. Now, I'm underscoring what I was saying um, in, the, in the other video with stuff before I move on to the uh, European Union chart. But a friend of mine sent me something um, from a book that I'd lent him. Uh, it's a book by Murray Stein, and it's about the process of individuation. Uh, the Jungian idea that uh, part of our purpose in life is to differentiate the uh, elements of our own psyche, our own unconscious. In, in, uh, we have to separate them out and, and, and work consciously with our own feelings and thoughts and complexes, uh, both cultural and um, inwardly, you know, in terms of our soul, so that we, uh, knowing our defense mechanisms, our shadow sides, uh, and in order to find a unification of our own personality, and then uh, once that's done, find our place in the world. That's what individuation is, is about. And um, Stein, yeah, my friend, uh, um, uh, showed me uh, this, and he wrote, he wrote to me about the last chapter in the book called Individuation and the Politics of Nations. So thank you, Ian, for sending this. I think it's uh, very relevant and very poignant. Now, I'm going to read a bit out. Stein says, the economic and cultural effects of globalization have stirred anxiety about loss of identity. On the one hand, globalization has been purported to be a giant force for good that can raise all ships and increase the prospects of peace and prosperity across the globe. 
while it promises to raise living standards for everybody, and indeed I, I think it has done in, in, a, in a very general sense, um, uh, there is a rise in living standards. However, it also seems inevitably to benefit a small group of the privileged, much more than the vast majority of others. And indeed, the people in, of Northern England particularly, they, they felt disadvantaged the, the whole way along. And I believe the Brexit vote was, was in part a, a statement of difficulty. Uh, the, 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 to, to vote for Brexit was a statement of that the governments are not listening anymore, that local representative democracy isn't working. And, and, and a kind of a reaction to this, to, to actually have a voice, actually say something which makes a difference, particularly up up north and it's very interesting that the higher they go around about london was mostly stay stay in the european union uh, to do with the um uh, a more perhaps privileged economically privileged or more um a kind of what's come to be known as the um liberal elite um uh, perhaps the uh, educational educational ideas stemming from um, uh, postmodernism and so on, but up north where, and 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 actually down in the uh, southwest, uh, fishing industries have been decimated. You know, there hasn't been enough investment. Uh, things haven't it, things haven't worked out, and so certainly we see uh, Jean Claude. Uh, Juncker and and um, uh, Donald Tusk, you know, their salaries going up now almost to four hundred million euros a year, and uh, God knows what they're going to get in benefits when they leave the EU. It's in it's in a bubble, you see. I believe there's seventeen percent tax that people live in that economic community bubble there in Brussels, and Luxembourg and Strasbourg and or, or, um, Geneva and so on. Anyway, so he says it's privileged, much more, uh, 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 the benefits go to a privileged few. At the same time, it threatens to eliminate unique cultural standards and reshape every nation in the image of a giant shopping mall stocked with the same objects and filled with identically clad consumers. Globalization threatens to dissolve everything into universal sameness. And it's that process of universal sameness which um, I'm addressing here. Universal sameness is the death of the individual. And people are feeling that very powerfully. And that's why I think there's been a, a, a lot of people cracking under the pressure. Uh, and the pressure is going to get even more when we look in the next video on the transits of Uranus to the MC of the chart and coming in to oppose its sun. And we're going to have a, have a look at that and analyze um, partially what that means from an astrological and psychological point of view. Anyway, I'll finish there. That's another preamble to the next video.